अंडरस्टैंडिंग द डेरेवेटिव ऑफ स्किन डेरेवेटिव ऑफ स्किन आर एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट द फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट डेरेवेटिव आर नेल हेयर एंड देन वी हैव स्वेट ग्लैंड सेबेसियस ग्लैंड मेमरी ग्लैंड इफ वी look onto the diagram that we have here there are various capsules mesenar capsule or uh, is what is known as the tactile capsules and this is one of the capsules which is responsible for the touch sensation understanding the first component or the derivative of skin which is hair now hair acts as a protective agent it also helps during the winter months because uh, in the hair the uh, surrounding the hair the air gets trapped and it actually helps in the process of insulation uh, hairs are also present in the eyelid to protect the eyes they are present in the no nostrils to protect and uh, the dust particles from entering inside on the face they are present and they are a sign of gender recognition so this hair the structure of the hair comes important now the hair is enclosed in a sac this sac is known as the follicle of the hair now follicle of the hair is made up of epithelial and connective tissues and they are associated with the erector pili muscle the role of the erector pili muscle is important during the cold months there is constriction of the erector pili erector pili muscle and that leads to erection of the uh, hair this hair has three important component that outermost is the hair shaft hair shaft is the outermost part which is visible this is non living it is keratinized and it it, it is actually cornified with flat cells so if you cut the outermost layer of a hair or cut it with a scissor you won't feel a pain but if you try to stretch it pull it then you would definitely feel a pain and that is because this hair goes deeper inside the dermis layer in the dermis layer there is the root of the hair and the bulb of the hair now the root of the hair is the basal part in the dermis which is enclosed in the follicle so this is the follicle enclosed in the follicle is the root hair and here we have the uh, cells which are living they are actively dividing and these cell give rise to the hair shaft then this root um, the root hairs are embedded in the bulb the root bulb or what we call as the hair bulb and this is an inverted cup shape structure as you can see here and this inverted cup shape structure has numerous blood capillaries nerve endings the hair papilla which is present and they are responsible for the nutrition to be provided to the hair so the structure and the components of the hair are important all these components the hair cells the sweat glands sebaceous glands are present in the dermis layer uh, revealed on the epidermis layer through the malpighian layers coming on next is the next derivative of skin which is nail now nail has two components the the topmost part is the nail plate but as you can see the white portion below which is the nail matrix this nail matrix is actively dis dividing and this is also known as linula so linula is the nail matrix it is actively dividing the outermost layer besides the nail matrix which is the white portion the other part of the nail is what is known as the nail plate it is non living and it is keratinized hard and brittle below the nail plate is the nail body nail body uh, the nail bed or the nail root is the layer which is below the nail plate and develops from the cell contributed by the cell matrix uh, so the the matrix of the nail actually contributes to the formation of the nail body or what is the nail bed or the nail root and the white portion is the linula which is the nail matrix so two important portions if i look on to the structure of the nail the lower part is the linula or the nail matrix the upper part is the nail plate below the nail plate is the nail bed which is also known as the nail root and that connects to the uh, nail plate so nail root or the nail bed is the living part the plate is the non living part it it is keratinized 
hard and brittle now the function of nail is to provide protection to the fingers and the toes the next is the oil glands oil glands are also known as sebaceous glands now these glandular pushings actually are seen on the follicular walls and they have branched alveoli glands each gland has few, few alveoli which are present and they release the sebum sebum is the waxy substance or the fatty um, substance that is released sometimes it is in the form of wax sometimes it is in the form of steroids even some of the important sebaceous glands one is the ceruminous glands ceruminous gland is the gland which leads to the production of ear wax which is also known as cerumen the next important gland is the meibonian gland meibonian gland is the gland which actually lubricates the eyes and helps in the formation of tear so uh, but it does prevent any outflow of the tear by lubricating the eyes so meibonian glands in the eyes ceruminous glands in the ears are important glands now some modifications of the sebaceous glands that we see uh, in certain case what happens we could say certain disorders associated with sebaceous glands if there is inflammation of the sebaceous glands it would lead to the formation of acne if the sebaceous glands accumulates the sebum below the skin it would lead to formation of pimples now when the sebum is actually oxidized and gets black formation on the black of the black heads are seen common places where you can see the black heads is the region outside the nostrils also there is another disorder which is known as freckles we won't say it as a disorder but uh, a change in the pigmentation so freckles actually mean the light and the dark patches on the skin these light and the dark patches on the skin is due to the pigmentation by melanin or the release of melanin now freckles are commonly seen on face the light and dark patches which are seen on the face are called as freckles the next is mammary glands mammary glands are again nothing but modified sweat glands uh, they are rudimentary in males and functional in females there are around 15 to 20 lobes of glandular tissue that actually uh, connect together to form the milk duct and this becomes functional after the birth of the child the next is sweat glands sweat glands are tubular portionings which originate in the dermis but come out through the epidermis and they are derived from the malpighian layer so sweat glands are derived from malpighian layer they are present in the dermis come out in the epidermis is and on the surface they are really revealed in the form of pores the distal part is coiled and glandular in nature uh, the distal part also have lots of blood capillaries which are present now some examples where sweat glands are uniquely found in the case of rabbit if we see the uh, the rabbit has a very rich clothed hair we could say but the presence of sweat glands are very few on the other hand in the rabbit there are numerous sweat glands which are present on the lips so one classic example is rabbit if we talk about human beings there are around 1 million sweat glands that are present in a region of just 1 square kilometer there are around 400 sweat glands just 1 square centimeter okay in a region of just 1 square centimeter there are around 400 sweat glands on the palms however on the back of the body there are around 60 to 80 sweat glands so the number of sweat glands across the body at different places do vary sweating occurs normally in summer but it can occur due to nervousness due to danger sign due to shivering weakness uh, sometimes we call it as cold sweating cold sweating is associated because of uh, weakness nausea or uh, extreme pain that could be witnessed by the body these sweat glands could be classified into two eccrine sweat glands and apocrine sweat glands eccrine sweat glands are present throughout the body so it starts with eccrine e and therefore you can remember it it is present on 
entire body so e for entire body e for eccrine gland so eccrine sweat glands are present on the entire body however apocrine sweat glands are present only in the axillary and the genital parts i repeat again the classification of sweat glands is important it is eccrine and apocrine eccrine starts with e so the good way to remember is e for eccrine e for entire that means eccrine sweat glands are present on the entire body apocrine sweat glands are present only on the axillary parts or the genital parts and uh, in the apocrine glands there are uh, hair follicles that do mix with sebum or the oil glands however the eccrine uh, sweat glands release only sweat so another important difference that you must remember here sweat is odorless colorless it is uh, when the organic compounds decompose and uh, this decomposition produces unpleasant odor because of the bacterial growth we say that the sweat is odor has an odor or an unpleasant odor but originally if we talk about sweat it is odorless it is colorless but it is only when the organic compounds are decomposed by the bacteria on the surface of the skin then this unpleasant odor originates uh, usually to avoid that unpleasant uh, odor antiperspirants are used which are zinc compounds again important to note they are made up of zinc zinc acts as or stops the secretion by the sweat glands and this is therefore used in antiperspirants so this was about understanding the derivatives of the skin